Hello, folks. Today we're going to be talking about cell structures, specifically animal cell structures. So today I've gone ahead and prepared a slide for you uh, from my own cheek cells. There should be a, an, accompanying, an accompanying video uh, regarding how these slides are prepared. I won't bore you uh, with the details again. But let's go ahead and check out these, the PowerPoint real quick, and then let's talk about what we are seeing in real life. So, your cheek cells, they are animal cells. We are animals, so you gotta remember that. Uh, when you're asked uh, questions about the cheek cell, um, make sure that you tell us that it's, uh, tell us that we're talking about this cheek cell as an animal cell. The point is, is that uh, we're talking about features that are shared amongst all animal cells. It doesn't matter whether it's cheek cell, a skin cell on my arm, a uh, hair cell from a dog, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is just a good representative uh, animal cell with not a lot going on, easily harvested at minimal pain to the user. Anyways, so I've gone ahead and rounded up a whole bunch. Let's go check those out. These are the three features that you'll need to be able to identify on this cell. So you have the nucleus in the center, cell membrane on the outside holding it all together, looking like a plastic bag floating through the breeze. Anyways. And then it is gonna be full of cytoplasm. So again, that's the empty space uh, that we have filling the cell. All right, so. You can see I've got quite the collection of cheek cells here. I scrubbed pretty vigorously. Um, See if I can correct that hue. So pretty as they look in person. Yeah. There we go. That's a pretty decent. representation of what I'm seeing over here. So this is a pretty low magnification. We're having a hard time seeing the important features. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more. Here we are now at 100x total magnification. You see those giant blobs of skin cells over there. Woo! Yeah. The thing is that you're um, your skin is constantly shedding dead skin cells. It's just a protective barrier. You'd rather have uh, dead stuff get scraped and knocked off than live stuff, right? So that's what your body does. Um, now, it might be a little bit tricky to pinpoint the features that we really wanna see on any of these one cells um, that are all bunched up together real closely. So let's focus in on this particular specimen right here, hanging out all by its lonesome. Look at it. Isn't that a, a happy little cheek cell? Oh man. That's a little bit better. So what you're seeing, and as I focus through, you can see the edges of this cell come into focus and fall out of focus. And so whenever you see it come very sharply into focus, that means that my plane of focus has lined right up to that cell membrane and is not right in the middle of it or above or below it, anything like not in the middle of the cell or any of that other business. So 
and we see that edge come sharply into focus, what we are seeing there is the actual cell membrane. Here's a pretty good spot snap picture of it. So you might have noticed um, we're only talking about three things on this cell. So we have the cell membrane holding it all together. We don't have cell walls because they would make us too rigid. We've got to be soft and squishy because we run around chasing down berries and critters and whatever else we need to do. Money, women, whatever, you know. Typical uh, human motivations. Um, anyways, but uh, so we want to maintain a certain amount of flexibility, which also makes it harder for us to osmoregulate. So that's why uh, plants can kind of tolerate a little bit wider of a range of conditions um, when it comes to uh, too much or too little water. Uh, So for this one, you need to know that we have a cell membrane on the outside, cytoplasm on the inside, and on the very center, that little jelly bean is our nucleus. That's full of all the blueprints to uh, self-replicate and carry on normal cell activities. Now, I was getting off track there. All right, so the thing is, is that, um, you probably know that this animal cell has more going on than a cell membrane, a nucleus, and cytoplasm. It's got an endoplasmic reticulum, it's got mitochondria, it's got centrioles, it's got um, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, all that jazz. The thing is, is that we aren't worried about it for the purposes of this lab, not because they aren't important or because you want ever have to deal with them again necessarily, but because right now what we're talking about are key features that can be used to distinguish a bacteria from a plant from an animal. Okay, so when you see this, so this is a single cell, but it is not part from a single celled organism. Know that it is part of a tissue that you're seeing over here. However, we might give you a picture just like that. And the thing is, is that if you're relying on multicellular versus unicellular to distinguish animal from bacteria, this is gonna screw you up, okay? So the features that you would look for here are the fact that it doesn't have a, a cell wall. It's not gonna have any sort of structured shape. The, Loose, soft little jelly sack, pretty much. In fact, that cell membrane is made out of fats. Okay, so. All right. So, our animal cell lacks cell walls. It has cell membranes. It has a nucleus because it's eukaryotic. If you're looking at this, trying to decide whether it's a eukaryote or prokaryote, that nucleus is the dead giveaway. And then all of that empty space is gonna be cytoplasm. If we're asking you about cytoplasm on the practical, we're gonna point an arrow to one of these nice blank spaces right here in the middle and ask you what this stuff is, okay? We wanna know about the cell membrane we're gonna put that arrow pointing right at the edge of this cell. Everyone feel good about that? I know y'all aren't there, but part of my routine, routine. So that has been our animal cell video. If you have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to reach out to your designated lab, in lab instructor regarding this lab. As always, have a wonderful day, and I will see y'all next time.